Okay, today I'm going to talk to you guys about the basics of functions. This is part one of maybe maybe three parts that I'm going to make for functions because it, it can be quite extensive. Let's start off a program. I'm using the dev C++ again. Um, include your IO stream and create the main function. So we've been using functions, the main function. Usually it looks something like this, return zero. Now functions is like a mathematical uh, construct basically where you have multiple inputs or no inputs it goes through like a black magic box and it does stuff to whatever you input and then it outputs one thing only so we're going to start off with a very basic function that doesn't do much at all to create a function you have to put it above your main function and declare the header file or header it's called or function header so I'm going to call this one print stuff and this is the way you define it in the header. You have a void, which means I'm not going to return anything from this function. The function name itself is called print stuff. And then inside the parentheses would be your arguments. I'm not bringing in any arguments or parameters to this function. Right now, it doesn't do anything. This is just telling the uh, compiler that um, I'm going to define a function called print stuff that returns nothing back to whoever called that function. But now we can go ahead and define that function anywhere below where the the uh, function header is. So typically you put it after the main, and you would write it out just like it's written out in the uh, function header. Print stuff. Only this time you don't put a semicolon. You put the open and close brackets to define the function. So what we're going to do is we're going to print stuff here. We're going to use the standard CO. We're going to use a standard C out and print stuff. And that's all it's going to do. It's going to return nothing. To call this function, you would start off in your main. And all you have to do is type in print stuff with the parentheses and enter. Now to run this, I'm going to hit F12. It's going to rebuild it all and then hit F5 to actually run it. And as you can see, it did it, but then it closed, and there was people that were talking to me on the comments section about this system pause. It looks something like this, system pause, or I think it was, it might be the case sensitive, I'm not sure. And you can run it like this, and it'll pause until it's waiting for a keystroke, right? So it says print stuff, you can see it right here, and then it's waiting for a keystroke. System Pause is not a good way to write C++ code. What it's actually doing is it's, it's, it's taken away from your program. It's opening up another program through the operating system system call. It's looking for a program called pause, and it's allocating memory and doing all these things in the background that are not really good. Um, it's, it's bad programming practice. Um, even though it looks simple in practice, because it's just one line of code, it's actually very poor programming practice. So to get around that, we usually just do something like uh, create an integer value called pause and cn pause. Hit F12 again to rebuild it all, and F5 to run it, and it pauses until I input something, an enter key, whatever. But just so you know, the system pause is not good programming practice. You can Google why. There's tons of reasons why. Um, just try to avoid that at all costs. Um, nobody should be teaching that. Um, but this is the very first function, and I will do a couple more right after this.